What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another review uh, and this time around we're going to be talking about a movie that I got sent to check out just a little bit earlier than its DVD and digital release widely on July 5th of 2022 coming up very soon and that movie is called Reiki Rhino. I've seen some other places that call it Reiki the Rhino. I think that's what it originally was called but I'm going to go ahead and call it Reiki Rhino for the rest of this review and uh, yeah welcome guys to the review if you are a regular here on the channel. want to thank you for stopping and by and checking out another video and if you're somebody who's new here to the channel i want to invite you to hit that subscribe button hit that like button comment your thoughts down below and yeah let's get into this Riki Rhino is an Indonesian film that actually came out in 2020 and is just now getting a wider release in 2022 and it i saw the dub version it's a movie that you know obviously was originally done in their original language and uh, because of that there is a bit of a you know very obvious dub to it you know the, the characters their mouths don't move to the exact same sync of the words that are being said in english uh, the version i was sent was in english uh, this film comes to us from evolutionary films and was directed by edward uh, budiono and uh, this is actually the first thing that he's ever done uh, according to imdb he has no other f things on his filmography at all uh, so yeah this is the first and only thing he's ever done as the director uh, as far as the cast and again i watched the American dub, the English dub, I should say, um, and that is uh, Jennifer Castle as Riki in this film. You have Paul Reynolds as Benny and Zach Lee as Mr. Jack, as well as many others that show up throughout the course of the film. And the basic premise of this film is you have Riki, this rhino, the Sumatran rhino. The film takes place in uh, the jungle of Indonesia, and uh, yeah, you have this this rhino who has his horn chopped off by a poacher, and you know he's completely defeated by this. Uh, he has this great friend, this duck named Benny, who ends up actually creating a horn for him uh, made out of his own feathers. And um, over the course of the film, he decides to go off with Benny to try to find someone who will be able to help him regrow his horn. He hears legend of this person called the master, the master grower, and somebody who is able to grant anybody any wish that they want, essentially. And so, yeah, he heads off on this journey with Benny the duck to go and find a way for him to regrow his horn and over the course of the film like a lot of these family films do have there's a great little message in there about like you know having to recognize that even though you lost a part of yourself it doesn't necessarily define who you are and over the course of the film as well he starts to meet other people that he chooses to help or other animals i should mention um and yeah over the course of the film they all start to give him these little totems if you will uh, that actually have different powers kind of ascribed to them so over the course of the film he's actually able to transform into different creatures and different forms of himself and yeah he goes on this journey again to find the master for the chance to regrow his own horn and what I'll say about this is I actually kind of enjoyed the journey. I found it to be an enjoyable watch. Uh, but if you're looking at the imagery that's on screen, you're probably wondering, yeah, this looks kind of dated. And what I'll start off by saying is if this movie had come out back in the day, like, I don't know, or like if I found out that this movie came out in the 90s and maybe was about to come out, maybe it was ready to go and they kind of had it restricted, maybe like early 2000s, I'd say like 2001, 2002, I would totally believe it. And, you know, honestly, for me, it's the show that reminded me of kind of the shows that were starting to do 3D animation on channels like Nickelodeon and Disney and Cartoon Network early, early in the days of that kind of being a thing, uh, when that was first starting to kind of start to appear on a lot of TV shows or TV channels for kids. And so there's so many shows that I watched that had very similar animation to this movie. Uh, but with that said, I think that's pretty much me saying that it's incredibly dated by today's standards, you know, with the Pixar's and the DreamWorks of the world. Even then, it's hard to kind of compete with those when it comes to smaller animation studios. Uh, but this was an Indonesian production, and I don't know what the budget for this film was. But, yeah, the look and feel of this film overall is very, very dated. This reminded me, kind of took me back mentally to a show I used to watch as a kid with my sister called Sitting Ducks. And, yeah, you know, overall, I found it to be this movie, uh, Ricky Rhino, to be a cute watch. Uh, it was kind of a nostalgic watch in a way. I've never seen this film before, obviously, but there was something about it, kind of like I mentioned, that took me back to the shows of when I was a kid that kept me 
you know, kind of engaged to see where it would go. I've always kind of thought of myself as a big kid. I'm 29 now. So, you know, with that said, I, I did find myself kind of bored at times with this movie because this is a movie very much for a younger audience. This is not a movie that's going to run and work for um, older kids. You know, it's not something you're going to put on for, you know, kid that's even like 10 years old or something like that at that point. This is definitely something for younger, younger kids. And, you know, I had moments while watching it. I just thought, you know, I'm going to turn this off. This isn't for me. You know, I, I don't want to trash on this movie. But I actually found myself intrigued and enjoying the journey overall. Um, you know, the voice acting, the animation, the look, the feel, everything about it is so, like I said, early 2000s, late 90s in terms of its cartoons. You have the villains that are the poachers, the one that's at the top that's this really serious guy. You have the two oafs that are kind of part of the mix. You know, the skinny guy who's the one who's maybe a little bit more um you know i guess you could say he's, he's smarter he's the he's the one that's a little bit more uh headstrong and what to do but he's also kind of a bumbling idiot and then he's got the big oaf that's kind of with him the you know the henchman that's the very silly goofy guy who laughs over silly things and is essentially just a you know it, it's kind of that, that classic of mice and men pairing you know we've seen it in a million uh cartoons and movies and and tv shows of the especially the 90s and the early 2000s and so yeah you have those you know character archetypes in this movie and uh you know you have a nice message there for kids you know there's a nice kind of feeling to this movie that felt like episodes of old shows that i would watch as a kid like bob the builder or freaking sitting ducks as i mentioned earlier uh where you know our characters are coming through the land and meeting different characters and you know just helping different people along the way and um yeah I, I look without a doubt this movie in terms of its looks is completely dated this movie was only enjoyable to me in the sense that it reminded me of shows that came out when i was a kid and you know even at 29 i've seen myself as a big kid but i i found myself disconnected from this movie overall um you know it's not for me i'm, I'm not the target audience but also as somebody who still watches a lot of family entertainment like i watch i keep up with the movies that are for you know i guess you could say kids but in terms of like the big animated films and stuff like i love that stuff i've never lost touch with that part of myself so i love a good animated film so going into Riki rhino yeah you know honestly the the animation and things like that though feeling a little bit like a throwback and nostalgic i think by today's standards just seem dated and it doesn't really speak to me in any real and substantial way plus the story is pretty hollow and again feels kind of like episodes kind of combined of a tv show that would have come out in the early 2000s i do want to uh, praise the two visual effects artists that made this movie though because there was only two of them um that is hedden mardianto and joko Procoso. and um yeah you know good on them for you know putting this film together you know there are good character designs overall i just think in terms of the animation it's not even that it's the worst it's just by today's standards it's dated you know and even for this movie have to have released in 2020 you know i think this is a movie that hey, listen if you're a parent and you got like kids that are like five and under throw it on for them if it's on streaming or something i can't say go out and rent this movie or go out and purchase this movie just for the sake of watching it or putting it on for your kids unless you like a good throwback early 2000s kind of looking and feeling show slash movie whatever this is um this is a movie but again it felt very much like a compilation of episodes of a show uh, of that time but anyway i'm gonna stop rambling now a big thanks to you guys for watching listening to this and uh yeah ricky rhino releases on july 5th on digital platforms as well as on dvd so i'll see you guys in the next one thank you guys so much and uh, bye bye